Hello paranormal people, my name is Raquel and today I'm going to be talking about my journey and experience with the left hand path. Now just to be clear, I've only been doing this for around six months, uh, just walking the left hand path in particular. I've done the right hand path and now I chose to do the left hand path. Now the thing is that a lot of people have that innocent mindset thinking it's a very easy path to walk and they don't quite grasp how hard it can be. Um, and the thing is, is that, um, especially when you're walking, uh, working with uh, deities and infernals, some of them are very difficult to work with. And that's just the reality. Not everyone is gonna wanna work with you and it's probably in your best interest to not work with every deity or infernal you come across. Um, this is something my mentor taught me is that they should be coming to you if they want to work with you. Which is a whole other video itself to figure out, you know, how do you know if they're calling to you? Um, so this is my personal advice and this is just my personal opinion. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, I really think that before anyone walks the left-hand path in particular, uh, you have to go through spiritual awakenings, even a spiritual psychosis, um, to really learn. Uh, and we're talking about very intense learning, uh, because if you're not learning anything from the spirit world, there's a problem. If you watch those shows, those paranormal shows and you take that and believe everything that's being said then and you're not learning anything more and you're not willing to learn you don't have that open mind then you're not going to be successful in in walking uh either the right hand path or the left hand path you're not going to be successful and a lot of people think it's very easy to work with infernals and deities um, it's not, uh, some of them are easier than others, uh, but at the end of the day, every single god, goddess, deity, and infernal that I've encountered wants you to learn something very valuable to make you into a better human being, uh, in a sense, right? Like, whether that's treating spirits with respect, whether that's, uh, treating other people with respect, understanding and what i mean by that is you know some of them will teach you like hey you should really understand you should set aside your judgments about homeless people and walk in their shoes or you know empathize with them not literally walk in their shoes right and so they really want you to learn a lot of valuable things in life. Now, something that I've learned is that they will teach you to be beyond human, beyond the average human. So it's not about being selfish all the time. They teach you to literally love other people. They just do, or love other animals, whatever. Whatever it may be, uh, they, at least that's what they teach me. You might have a completely different experience, which is acceptable, but at the end of the day, um, you know what, if they are there to guide people, that means they are good uh, in, in a sense, right? If they spend, if they devote years to helping you, learning about you, that means they're good, right? So um, in turn, that means they expect the same out of you to be good to other people who are less fortunate. So if a spirit tells you to donate, you better put $2 aside when you do groceries to donate. Um, it's for you to be a better human being. Now, are those expectations right away? No, but as long as you do that, or at least try, that's really all that matters. Um, but they have higher expectations of you to actually come to be dedicated into what they teach um, and now they do have high expectations but they know that not everyone is going to meet those expectations so they're very reasonable um, 
But the reason why the left-hand path is hard to walk is because you need to know your identity without a doubt, because that is what's going to empower you. That's what's going to give you confidence in your abilities to make your abilities more powerful, your magic more powerful. And I made another video or I made a video in the past saying how important it is to understand like different aspects of your identity, whether that's your gender identity. And so, for example, um, you need to, you know, you might say, well, I'm female. So what? Well, you need to go in depth, you need to go deep into that definition of what it really means to be female to you. Um, otherwise, you're not learning about yourself and you're not learning about other people uh, and their experiences. So, you know, they really teach you to be <coughs> um, beyond the average person. Um, the other thing is, is that you definitely don't ever want to lose an infernal deity uh, ever uh, because that means that you made a mistake. That means you've let them down. Now, trust me, some mistakes happen overnight and there's really severe consequences. And if you decide to be, um, you decide to make mistakes, um, now, they're going to be understanding to a certain level, but, you know, certain mistakes, you really have to think about your team. You have to think about your spirit team. You have to think, is this going to let my spirit team down? Do I have permission to do this? Um, you know, you have to be considerate of the spirits that are helping you. Do you thank them? Are you genuine about it? Do you tell them why you're thankful about uh, what they've done for you? Even if they leave, do you thank them for all the work that they've done? Um, are you appreciative of that? Are you appreciative of that? You know, showing thanks to the spirits that work with you. And um, I'll just show you. Now, I'm kind of a bit shy to show this because it's very personal, but this is my offering bowl to spirits that are very devoted to me for life. So I have an offering of cash uh, just to show that, you know, it's, it's just a small offering. And I know this might sound a bit silly, but I have an offering of a candy cane. I know that sounds a bit silly. Okay, I get it. But the reason why is because some spirits don't have family uh, for Christmas. So I wanted to just show a little bit of an appreciation for that. I have a tobacco offering. Uh, if you don't know about indigenous culture, you should research it because most of you are, who are watching are probably on Turtle Island. Um, so this is a tobacco offering. I have missing and murdered indigenous women and girls, uh, two-spirit two earrings. Uh, so red dress earrings just to uh, show what I've learned uh, through spirits and to uh, make them learn as well on my journey about indigenous people. And then I have all my really valuable uh, uh, crystals and minerals uh, in this. And, you know, at the end of the day, just so you know, the offering bowl, you know, I'll kind of show you, doesn't have to be anything expensive. Like if you can't afford something expensive, don't worry about it. Just do what you think is considerate. It doesn't have to be this amazing offering bowl, or I shouldn't say that, but you know, it doesn't have to be what many people think is amazing. It just has to be something that uh, you think would be a nice gift for spirits. So spirits will literally take these items spiritually and uh, I've literally seen them walk up to the offering bowl um, to take some items and most of them uh, most of them prefer the the crystals and stuff but um, you know it's just to say thanks uh, for all the work that they do and it's such a small offering but um, it's important that it's acknowledged right um, and 
you know, when you walk the left-hand path, you can't just take advantage of your team. You know, you have to ask permission, like, is it okay? And this is what I learned from my mentor. You have to ask permission if it's okay to curse somebody. Um, and a lot of people might be, you know, some viewers who might be watching might be against that stuff. Well, you know, sometimes some people are just really evil and they need to learn to stop doing what they're doing. Uh, some people, you know, deserve justice uh, for the things that happen to them. Like, there's so many good reasons to curse people. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a form of justice. It's, that's really what it is. Um, it's a, it, it can be a way to bring peace, uh, believe it or not. Um, but I know some people might be against that, but I'm not gonna beat around the bush and say that I don't agree with it. I, I do agree with it. And, um, you know, when you walk the left-hand path, yeah, you, your shadow comes out. But the thing that I want to be very clear is that it doesn't mean that you need to bring out your nasty qualities out but it's good for shadow work to address those nasty qualities because we all have them we we you know i mean maybe not everyone maybe some people are really good people out there but um you know we all we're only human right we have flaws but it does you know the left hand path doesn't mean having an attitude it doesn't mean uh being backstabbing stuff like that you know, it doesn't mean having this high ego, which a lot of people get enveloped in because, it, it, you know, when you walk the left hand path, it's meant to make you very empowered. It's meant to make you powerful, right? And some people fall into these traps and then that's their block for the rest of their life. They get stuck in this ego and that's not what the left hand path is about. It, it's about becoming who you truly are. And that's what, that's what the infernals love the left-hand path because a lot of people who walk the left-hand path tend to work with infernals. Um, and, you know, they love helping you with identity, stuff like that. Uh, they like to help you feel empowered. Like Lilith is a really, really powerful infernal to teach you about feminism. And, uh, you know, I don't get it. A lot of people are against feminism. She is literally known. I've watched other YouTubers to validate my experiences with Lilith, and they'll say that she is, does uh, teach about feminism. So I'm not wrong here when I connect with these infernals. Um, and uh, now, you know, to be clear, you, you can have an ego, but it should be earned and it should be dealt with with grace. That's the best way I can put it. Because if you're so enveloped in ego, that can be your downfall. And, you know, I'm just going to say it. Part of being the left-hand path is literally to become your own god or, or infernal that's what it is so you have to be able to handle these things um, to become one right and part of becoming one is you know in the afterlife or in life you're gonna be helping people right like that's part of becoming a god or goddess or deity or infernal is to help other people and otherwise, what's the point? What's the point of becoming a god, goddess, infernal, deity, if you're not going to help people? Is it going to be selfish? You know, what's the point of walking the left-hand path if it's completely selfish? Again, this is just my personal opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. This is just my experience with the paranormal. Um, this is everything that the spirits have taught me, and much thanks to... Uh, all the spirits that have helped me on my journey and who have guided me. Um, you know, um, the one thing that I'm going to say is that 
be very respectful of those spirits that work with you and that guide you because they literally read into you they read into your past they devote hours and hours and days and weeks months into helping you so be very mindful of that when you're working with them be very respectful of them um don't don't uh um do something that you're gonna regret if you know something is wrong don't do it um because that's your intuition telling you to listen to the spirits because that your intuition is kind of a gift from the spirit sometimes um um what i mean is that spirits will sometimes give you intuition to uh tell you eh, you shouldn't be doing that um stuff like that um, but the reason why I said specifically you need to go through spiritual awakenings and psych spiritual psychosis because I've had spiritual psychosis. I've had many spiritual awakenings. In fact, I've had many spiritual psychosis moments. The reason why is because that is the best way to learn. And at the end of the day, you can keep watching uh, all the videos you want. But at the end of the day, you have to learn on your own and you have to make mistakes along the way. And your spirit team knows this so it's not I'm not trying to scare people saying that you know you can't make mistakes but there are certain mistakes that are devastating um, so be very careful on um, the toes that you step on and in fact I wouldn't step on any spirits toes uh, it's all in fact I would very much value learning from every spirit that I encounter because they have stories to share. They have experiences to share. They have life experience. That's an honor and a privilege to learn from them. And that's something that my uh, Japanese infernals actually taught me is to be very respectful of your mentors, the deities and infernals you work with. Um, and actually that's also what the samurai spirits taught me uh, is to be very respectful of your leaders. Um, because they have very valuable experience that they're willing to share with you, which is an honor and a privilege. Uh, they don't want you to disrespect these beings, uh, even spirits, or just when I say spirits, I just mean like earth spirits or spirits that crossed over. Be very respectful. Um, now, I, I, I think in future videos, I'm going to talk about what a spiritual psychosis experience is like and what a spiritual awakening is like. But these are things that you need to go through, I think, before you walk the left hand path. And part of that, you know, is um, just testing out your abilities on your own and trying to connect with spirits and uh, be very careful of the messages you receive because spirits may be testing you or sometimes they're just flat out liars, you know, uh, they just might be playing around with you. So you have to, you have to do reality checking. Like that's my important and foremost biggest advice is to reality check. Like, uh, did this really come from my grandparents or did it seem off? Did it seem like their personality? You know, yes, I can understand that, you know, over time they ha can change and learn things. So I know that their personality is a bit different, but, you know, they're saying a lot of negative things to me. Does that really make sense that that's my grandparents? So do reality checking, you know, eh, am I really more powerful than a deity or an infernal? You know, I'm being told that I am. Uh, you're probably not right like these are more advanced beings no one in life is more powerful than an infernal or deity unless you are specifically an infernal yourself or a deity but that's a whole other thing itself uh, most likely the infernals are telling me that it has to be earned for you to be a deity or an infernal it has to be earned um which 
Sometimes that requires trauma. Sometimes that requires you to make great changes in the occult or uh, sometimes that requires a lot of dedication, devotion. Um, you know, there's so many things that allow you to earn that title, but don't let ego get in the way. Uh, you know, you know, if you think you're doing really good, great candle magic, that doesn't make you an inferno or deity. You know, it takes a lot of time, uh, practice to become a god, goddess, or infernal. So the left-hand path is a very long and difficult path to walk. Um, anyways, I hope this video has helped you in some way, or at least you learned something from it. I hope you have a good day or evening wherever you are. Okay, peace.